Hey, what's going on everyone? Greg here, and one of the coolest announcements from Apple's September event had nothing to do with a new iPhone. In fact, it had nothing to do with a revolutionary new product. It was the long-awaited redesign of the iPad mini that had me the most excited because of just how neglected this product has felt in Apple's lineup for the longest time until now. Because now the iPad mini gets a brand new redesign that looks like the latest iPad Air, it has Touch ID and the power button, Apple Pencil 2 support, and some surprising features that make this iPad mini one of the most shocking iPad releases yet. And there's a lot of information you need to know before I think you should purchase this iPad mini or frankly, any other iPad in Apple's lineup. So first things first, unlike the iPhone 13, which is going up for pre-order this Friday, or the Apple Watch Series 7, where we don't know the exact release date for that yet, it's sometime in fall, uh, the iPad mini actually is already technically up for order. You can order the iPad mini or the new iPad mini 9 right now on Apple's website, and you'll be able to get them shipped to your house or pick them up in an Apple store this Friday, so... This really is a watch before you buy video because you can purchase these products right now. Of course, the iPad mini is the more exciting iPad of the two that were released, and it takes the 7.9 inch small iPad mini form factor and stretches that display across to get rid of the top and bottom bezel, and this results in a new 8.3 inch display size. And quite frankly, the redesign looks fantastic, and it's the design treatment that I never thought we would get with the iPad mini as I kind of thought that Apple would eventually discontinue it after the last iPad mini refresh, so I was pleasantly surprised to see that it actually stuck around for a modern update. Now, the new mini should actually be slightly smaller in form factor than the old iPad mini, uh, design with its height being listed as 7.69 inches versus the 8 inches on the older mini. The weight is still around the same with it weighing around 0.65 pounds for the Wi-Fi model and 0.66 pounds for the Wi-Fi and cellular model. There's also some new colors for the iPad mini and some exclusive colors too. So now you get space gray, pink, purple, and Starlight, which replaces silver and kind of looks a little bit more beige based on the pictures from Apple's website. There's some additional details too, because the new iPad mini has Touch ID and the power button, just like the iPad Air. And if you notice from these press images, the iPad mini actually has the volume buttons moved to the top portion of the iPad. And that's because this mini also supports the Apple Pencil 2, which can magnetically attach to the side of the mini. And because the Apple Pencil 2 is almost the same size as the length of the iPad mini, well, there would be just no way for Apple to keep the volume buttons on the same side as where the Apple Pencil attaches. And of course, like any of the new iPad redesigns, this iPad mini ditches the lightning port in favor of the USB-C port, which will result in not only faster charging, but also faster data transfer rates. Now, going back to the display for a second, I forgot to mention that it's the same quality as the iPad Air's display. So 500 nits of peak screen brightness, the extended P3 wide color support, and the True Tone display. The Mini also now supports new landscape stereo speakers for the first time, so the sound quality should also be a lot better than just firing from the bottom like the older iPad Mini design. And there's actually a lot more to this iPad Mini because it had some pretty big surprises and some exclusive features that even the iPad Air doesn't have. And that comes in a couple new features. So the first one is Center Stage, which debuted on the latest M1 iPad Pro. Center Stage basically takes a 12 megapixel ultra wide angle camera, puts that on the front of the iPad mini and then captures a really wide angle field of view and then it can dynamically and automatically crop onto human subjects. So if you walk, or move around, the camera will automatically pan and sweep to set you in the center of the frame, as well as when people move or exit the camera's field of view, it can then lock onto human subjects and kind of pan and move around with them. This feature is also available on the new iPad 9, and the only iPad it's not available on is actually the more expensive iPad Air. Another weird exclusive feature is that the iPad mini has a flash for the 12 megapixel camera on the rear of the device for all you iPad photographers out there. 
And again, the Air does not have a rear flash. The biggest shock feature-wise to me is the fact that the iPad mini is getting Apple's latest a15 chip. That's the same chip that is found in the iPhone 13. And in fact, the iPad mini's A15 chip is actually the five core GPU version that is found on the more powerful iPhone 13 Pro. Apple says that the A15 chip in the iPad mini is 40% faster than the previous mini and has two times faster machine learning. Now, the reason why this is so surprising to me is because the iPad mini is now the second most powerful iPad right behind the iPad Pro. It is stronger than the more expensive and bigger iPad Air, and that is just crazy to me. The iPad mini is getting exclusive features like center stage and even more power thanks to the A15 chip. And I assume because it's using the iPhone 13 Pro version of the A15 chip, that it could possibly also come with six gigabytes of RAM, which means that it also has two more gigabytes of memory than the iPad Air and it's $100 less than the iPad Air. And to top it all off, the iPad mini also has an option for 5G cellular connectivity, and that is just simply not available on the more expensive iPad Air model with cellular. That is still using 4G. So when you look at the iPad Air in the lineup, sure, it's bigger and obviously aimed at a different audience, but it seems like such a poor value when you consider that the iPad mini right now has all of these advanced features, and I have to imagine that Apple will be updating the iPad Air sometime soon to at least match the specs of the iPad mini, because it's just very awkward that the iPad Air is weaker than the mini version. All right, I think I covered most of the new features with the iPad mini, so let's talk pricing and some buying advice. So the iPad mini 6, like I kind of predicted, is gonna be more expensive this year. It's gonna start at $499 for the 64 gigabyte model. Now, of course, the mini isn't trying to replace your laptop, and because it's not, a iPad mini as a secondary device with 64 gigabytes of storage could actually be passable. Uh, but if you plan to load up your mini with a lot of games, uh, videos, or just other storage heavy files, I would really recommend upgrading to the 256 gigabyte model like I did for $649. You may also want to consider the cellular mini option, which could kind of turn the iPad mini into kind of like an even bigger iPhone 13 Pro Max 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 <laughs> but just be warned that getting the cellular version is going to add 150 dollars to the cost making this already expensive ipad mini even more expensive we should also acknowledge that the ipad mini might not be the right ipad for everyone because of its smaller size this ipad is obviously well suited for being an amazing small tablet but just that, a tablet. And while it might be the most portable iPad in the lineup, and that could be the best tablet experience for you if you prefer a smaller size iPad, it is not necessarily a laptop replacement like any of the other iPads in the lineup. For example, the mini lacks the smart connector to easily attach keyboard cases. And the display is small, meaning it won't be as good as multitasking even though this mini does get all the multitasking features of iPadOS 15, the most limited part of the multitasking experience is just gonna be that smaller 8.3 inch display. In fact, the cheaper $329 iPad 9 would probably be a better laptop alternative than the iPad mini because of the smart connector, which can still attach to keyboard cases like Apple's smart keyboard, cover and even get a trackpad with Logitech's combo touch keyboard case. It also comes with the same 64 gigabytes of storage as the base mini. And although the screen isn't the same quality as the mini with the lack of the you know lamination and P3 wide color support, it is still a bigger 10.2 inch display, which again, I think would be a much better laptop replacement product with that bigger display. Now, like I said before, the iPad Air is kind of the awkward one in the lineup now. And right now, I'm not sure how highly I can recommend it because I think 
a refresh of this product has to be coming sooner rather than later. However, if you really do want that modern, you know, iPad Air, iPad Pro design, and the 11 inch M1 iPad Pro is still too expensive for you, and you want a bigger display, well, the Air might still be the way to go if you can stomach getting the weaker chip and having, you know, a lack of features like the lack of center stage, or if you're going for the cellular option, a lack of 5G connectivity. Furthermore, if you want the best iPad possible with a high refresh rate of 120 hertz, or if you're looking for the biggest iPad possible with the best display technology and money really is no issue, well, obviously the M1 equipped iPad Pros are the iPads you should be looking at, starting with the 11 inch iPad Pro, which I think right now is a way better value than the iPad Air. If you want all the advanced iPad features and even more than the mini because you get that super powerful M1 chip. And if you want, you can even move up to the expensive but huge 12.9 inch iPad Pro for that new mini LED display, which could basically be the anti iPad mini at this point because this iPad is literally the size of a 13 inch laptop. These iPads are super expensive though and probably not geared at the same audience who is interested in the iPad mini but obviously uh, they are part of the iPad lineup and may be the one that you end up going for after watching this video if you prefer the way that iPad OS works uh, compared to more traditional operating systems like Mac OS or Windows. And again, if you want an iPad that's big enough to be a complete laptop replacement. But yeah, so far that's everything that's new with this brand new iPad mini. Uh, I'm gonna be getting mine this Friday for the full review and I am really excited to check this out. I've always been a fan of the iPad mini and I'm so happy it got the iPad Pro redesign treatment. So let me know in the comments below, are you planning on buying this new iPad mini or do you plan to go for a different iPad like one of the ones I listed, maybe the new iPad 9, the iPad Air, or of course the M1 iPad Pro. As always, if you like this video, be sure to give me a like. If you wanna see more from this channel, obviously make sure you're subscribed. Again, gonna be a lot of Apple videos coming very soon. Uh, if you wanna buy the iPad mini from maybe like an affiliate link through Amazon, check out the links in the description. And as always, thank you so much for watching and I will see you all in the next video. Take care, everyone.